Hi, in this video I'm going to teach you how to sight read all this music. A sight reading is when you're playing music and you're reading it, that you music you've never seen before, that you've not practiced or rehearsed, you're reading it, you're playing it in real time, and your brain is having to process things very quickly. Um, I've got some very simple methods to teach you how to do that, how we can batch process and, uh, and process that music in real time. It's really a useful skill to be able to do. I've taught this lesson many, many times, hundreds of times. It works every time. So if you give me half an hour of your time, I, I, I promise you by the end of this, you'll be, you'll be sight reading this music. Um, if you want to download the sheet music, you can. There's a link below. Um, just put your email address in and it'll get emailed to you immediately. So you can print it out and that'll make the lesson go a little easier. If you join my mailing list, I've got a lot of useful uh, resources on there that are free and I send out little video lessons. Um, so And if you want to un unsubscribe anytime, that's fine. So let's get into it. I hope this is going to be useful for you. I know a lot of people struggle with reading notation, especially drummers, if, especially if you're a bit self-taught. Maybe you've tried it, maybe you've looked at some things and you've just not got on with it. Um, I've been teaching this for about 30 years. I've done this actual lesson that I'm giving you hundreds of times and it's it always works. There's a, there's a you know, I know this method works. So I'm hoping it will work for you and, it, and, and, um, and I hope it will help you too. So it's going to take a little while, stick with it, by the end of this lesson, you're going to be able to read all that music, okay? So, before we start, there's a couple things that we need to just think about before we actually get into playing. Um, so, when you're learning, I'm, I, I've been teaching a long time, and what I've learned from my teaching is that it's really important that you have a process when you're learning, that you that the teacher just doesn't dump a load of information on you um, because that that's just not very helpful, okay? So that having the information is, is only part of it. What you need, you need a process. And what I strongly believe in as well, what I've learned over all the time, is that also what you're thinking of when you do it massively affects how the outcome. OK, so if you've got a thought process, yeah, and this is where, you know, we use analogies, we use all sorts of things, um, but a, a certain way of thinking about how you're doing it will really help you, you know. So if you found things before that you just haven't gotten on with, maybe you just didn't have, you know, maybe you just need to think about it, come at it from an av another angle, and it would unlock some of that mystery for you. So I'm hoping that's what this will do. <laughs> so, um so before we start, there's a few things, a few things we need to establish. So first of all, what are we talking about? Well, this is snare, what, what we call snare drum music. OK, so it's just on one drum. It's one line, single line music. Now, I know drum kit music is on multiple layers, but I think when you're learning, if you're new to reading, um, this is a really great place to start. Once you get these learning to read the rhythms, that's going to be massively helpful because then after that, it's just, you know, it's the same thing, just on different different lines um, and equally you know maybe for if you play saxophone trumpet or, or any, any other instrument and you're finding reading a little difficult um, I would suggest you start with this just learn the rhythms learn to read the rhythms and then you can start applying the pitch later I think very often pitch instruments you spend too long thinking about the pitch and not enough time thinking about the rhythm and it's usually the rhythm where people struggle with their reading so if you eliminate pitch and you just focus on rhythm I think you might find that helps you a lot so let's get into it. So before we start, um, there's just a couple things I want you to think about, about the process. So having, having gone on about all that, um, that I think will set you up in the right way of thinking. So the first thing to realize is that basically we've got a whole sheet of music here. You're going you're gonna to learn to play that. By the end of this lesson, you're going to play all that music. So just stick with this. Um, so what is it? It's a bunch of it's a bunch of blobs and squiggles, right? Um, I often refer to it as the hieroglyphics, you know, like they had on the Egyptian tombs. That you know, you just need to learn what these things mean. It's not hard. It's just it's just understanding what's going on. Now, if you think of it like this, uh, uh, on a drum, basically, basically every blob that you see there is a bang on the drum. Okay, so like that's. That's it. That's basically it. What you've got to figure out, though, what from the from the notation, is how to space those out, and that's essentially what rhythm is. It's the it's how you space the notes out. Okay, 
And what we do is we use the length of the notes, the note, what we call the note values to do that and the combinations of them and also the rests, of course. So that's what we're going to learn. Uh, but we're going to learn a process of how to uh, batch process that as well. So uh, why is that important? Because what we're dealing with and what I'm talking about today is not just reading music, but actually sight reading music. That's quite a different thing. You could spend, you know, three months learning to play a bit of music, and that's great. That's fine. Nothing wrong with that. Um, but what I'm talking about learning is sight reading. Sight reading is when, you know, certainly for, for me, you know, I've done this many times. I go on stage, and I'm playing pieces of music that I don't know, you know, and, and, and we're all, the band are all sight reading. I mean, that doesn't happen very often. It's pretty scary, but it's like it can happen. So, so sight reading is when you're when you're reading the notation and you're playing it in real time, uh, and it's stuff that you don't know, you've not seen before. You're sight reading. You're you're given a sheet of music. Go play. You know, um, and that takes a certain certain set of skills. Okay, so essentially, our brain is processing this data in real time. So we have to learn to process it very fast. And the way we do that is we batch process. Okay, and I'll come on to the, more on that on a minute. Okay, so we've established that we've got a bunch of blobs and squiggles. We're going to bang the drum for every blob, and what we're trying to figure out is how to space them out. Okay, now let's look at this next sheet. Um, so. Because we need to, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm giving this. Um, I'm presuming we've covered some of this. We understand this, okay? But I've put the sheet there for you, so we have to know what the note values are. So, I mean, you, you know, you've got the sheet there. You need to just learn that. You need to figure out what these things are, and they're often written in this kind of pyramid fashion because essentially they work on subdivisions, okay? So. Um, now, in Britain, we refer to these notes as semi-brief, minim, crotchet, quaver, semi-quaver, demi-semi-quaver. The American system refers to them as whole notes, half notes, quarter notes, eighth notes, sixteenth, thirty-second notes. Okay, for good reason, and I'll, I'll explain more on that in a minute. There are actually a couple more notes. So we have a brief, and we have a hemi, demi, semi-quaver. Um, you know, they're so rare. It's so rare you're ever going to see them. Don't worry about it for now, okay? Like, it's just, they're not going to come. It's not a problem. Don't worry about it. So there's enough there with these six notes. Now, every note has an equivalent rest, okay? So what are we dealing with? We're talking about the length of the notes. So every note has a certain length, has a value to it. And then the uh, rest, essentially, it means silence for the same equivalent length, yeah? So by jumbling up the notes and rests, we get music. Now, this whole system is based on fractions, as I said. Now, if you, if you know, an easy way to think of that is if you like pizza, like me, then you just, you know, imagine a pizza on a plate. You've got the whole thing there. That's the whole note. You chop it in half, yeah, and you chop it in quarters. And so essentially, the, all these little notes down the bottom here, um, all of those notes, those 30 second notes, if you were to play them, they would fill up the same amount of space as the one big note at the top. OK, so everything's on fractions. And then obviously we can play combinations of those different notes as well. OK. All right. Now, there's a fundamental issue with this on the drum. And this is something that confuses a lot of people. All right. And this is something we need to bear in mind and be aware of when we're sight reading, when we're studying this stuff. So first of all, this is I'll show you what I mean. So first of all, I'm going to play I'm going to play a semi brief. I'm going to play one semi brief. Here you go. OK. All right. It's a long note. OK. That's a semi brief. Now I'm going to play you one demi semi quaver. It's a very short note. OK. All right. So so what's going on there? I played two different notes there. OK. But they sounded the same. Why is that? Well, there's a fundamental problem with the drum. OK. We cannot control the length of the note. When we bang the drum, what we get is a short sound. The sound it makes is short. So when it, whatever note we play, we only ever hear the very beginning of the note, followed by what sounds like a space. OK, now this is not true if you were playing trombone or another, any other kind of wind instrument. To a certain extent, piano, guitars, you know, they can sustain a little long, longer so they can control the length of the note. So if we were to do that same exercise on a trombone, the first one, the semi breathe would sound like this. Yeah, and then you would play a demi semi quaver would be 
like that. Okay, <laughs> all right. Get the idea. So remember that. Now that you know, that's something that's going to significantly affect how we deal with our notation. So we need to bear that in mind. Is that okay? We're we all clear about that. So there's a fundamental problem with the drum. We need to find a way of dealing with that. And I've got a solution. I'll come to that in a minute. So let's just park that for now. Let's go back to the notation. We need to just keep that in mind, though, because something else is going to uh, uh, come before we get into the notation. So, so here's something else we need to think about. So, um, so let's look at this music. So we've got all these blobs and squiggles. We've got all these notes on this page. Um, if if w we need to be able to batch process, as I said, okay. Now there's a way we do that. But before we get into that. I want to do another little exercise, okay? Without thinking, I'm going to click my fingers. I want you to, without thinking, very quickly, when I click my fingers, I want you to read the words at the top of the page go. So it says snare drum sight reading sheet one. Okay, well done. <laughs> so um, now something special happened in your brain when you did that. Okay, when you were a very small child, you would have not used the same process. A small child would read that you know. So what's going on there, right? So the small child is what they're doing is essentially they're reading one letter at a time. And the result of that is all coming out, you know, gobbledygook, right? So it's not it's not coming out how it should. What you did when you read it was you processed the whole word at a time okay that's batch processing that's what i mean and the result of that means that you can process it faster and you can speak it in real time as you're reading it you're reading it and you're saying it and you're speaking it and it's coming out just as if you were just saying it in normal conversation that's what we need to be able to do with our music and our notation okay and that's what we're going to do so now let's look at this music again Okay, let's look at it with new eyes now, fresh eyes. So essentially, every note is a letter. Where the, no where the notes are joined together with the tails, those are words. And then what you've got is a sentence. So that one, each line of music is a sentence. Yeah, What you need to be able to do to sight read is you need to be able to process the music a whole word at a time instead of one letter at a time. And that's the mistake a lot of people make when they're trying to sight read music. Yeah, if you're th if you're looking at each note individually, you can't do it. You need to batch process. You need to group the notes into rhythmic words. Okay, all right. And I'm going to show you how to do that. So, um, what do we do? Essentially, we use a system that is called phonetics. Phonetics. P H. It's spelled phonetics. Spell awkward. P H O N E T I. CS phonetics, um, and it's a very it's a very common system. Okay, and it works it works really well for a number of reasons. Okay, and our brains like this. Our brains are used to this kind of way of thinking. So when we when we use things that our brains are comfortable with, that makes sense. Uh, it's like you're swimming with the tide. Okay, so you're going to progress much better. So phonetics. So what we're going to do is essentially we're going to assign an actual word to each rhythmic word on this page and now i'm really going to impress you because actually there's only five words on that whole sheet of music that whole sheet only uses five rhythmic words so you only need to learn five words to be able to play all that music okay but <laughs> but you need to learn them very very well OK. And what I often say to my students is you need to you need to recognize them. This works on this. This whole system works on speed of recognition. So you need to recognize them and know them as well as you know your colors. OK. So when I, what I do with my students, I point to things. I say, what color is that? What color is that? What color is that? And I want them to say it, you know, say the answer as soon as you can. And I've got some blue curtains here. You can't see them. So when I point, it's like blue. Right. So now what happens is in your brain, you see the blue curtains and you're in your brain, your your brain's going blue, it's blue, you know, before before you can even get it to come out your mouth, you already know it's blue, right? The same as like the green door or the brown carpet, you know, your your brain already knows the answer within within a you know, like three milliseconds. And that's how well you need to know 
your five words. Because if you know them and you instantly recognize it, uh, when you see it on the notation, that's how we can batch process. That's how we can process all that information quickly enough and play it in real time as we're seeing it. Okay, and we're going to do that. So we're going to we're going to we're going to assign five words. Now the words could be anything. They could be anything you like. And for about the last thirty years, I've been using British football teams or soccer teams because I teach a lot of you know young lads. They like soccer. It helps them to remember it. So, but <laughs> but I realise I want this video to be a little more international. So I'm using a new system now. I'm using beverages, but you can you can use anything you like. But I've got this system now. We're going to use beverages. So bear with me. Um, if I start reciting football teams by mistake, <laughs> it's a bit hardwired. Um, so here we go. We're going to learn the first two. So now, the first two uh, notes we're going to learn are the crotchets and the quavers. Okay, so remember, every blob is a bang on the drum. What you're trying to do is space them out. Okay, like I said at the beginning. So when we see a crotchet, we're going to say T, T. Okay, now that word is a good word because it has a length to it. So when I say the word T, T, what that's doing is that is giving the note its full length which doesn't happen when I bang the drum. Remember, I bang the drum, I just get the beginning of the note. But when I say the word T, I'm actually uh, giving the note its whole, its full value. And that is what's going to mean I'm going to be spacing the notes out properly. Okay? All right? Now, something else I want you to do, and again, you know, I've taught this a lot, and I know uh, this will really help. I know it sounds a bit, it's a bit daft, especially if you're sitting there on your own, but it's a really good idea to say the words out loud, especially at the beginning when you're starting. And the reason is you 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 then hear it, uh, if you actually enunciate it out loud. I know, like, we don't want to do these things, so we just, you know, I'll do it in my head. But it doesn't work as well if you should do it in your head. You've got to say it out loud, because, it's, because what's happening is, um, when you're learning, you're basically programming this in. And what you've got to get your brain to be able to do is connect uh, three things all together. One is what you're seeing with your eyes, which is the, the little graphic symbol. You need to associate that with, with the word T. And then by saying it out loud, that is giving you the, the length of the note. And then, of course, when we bang the drum, we hear that back on the drum. And, and, and our brain connects that with, with T. Yeah, so I know it all sounds a bit <laughs> crazy, but it works. It really works. So do bear with me and try it. So let's try it. Let's do the first, the first uh, crotchet. So we're just going to go around and we're going to look at the crotchets, the little one, the little like the golf clubs, and then we're going to say T. Okay, so very simple. I know, I know this is really simple. It's about the process. We're programming this information in. So bear with me. This will, this will pay off when we start sight reading the music. So here we go. T, 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 just round and round, and look at the notes. Look at the notes as you're looking at them. You're saying the word T, 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 round and round. So you're really trying to program that into your brain, into your subconscious mind, okay? And the next, we've got the, the two quavers is coffee, okay? So coffee, and remember that the, the fee, the fee, the second note is exactly halfway, Okay, fifty percent across the uh, across the beat. Here we go. So coffee, two quavers. Coffee, 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 coffee. Okay, very good. Now, essentially, if we just mix some of them up, what we've got is is music. Okay, so let's look at the next line down. What we've got there is tea, tea, coffee, coffee. Yeah, see what's going on there. Next one. Coffee, toffee, tea, tea. Okay, very simple. Next one. Coffee, tea, tea, tea. And the last one. Tea, tea, coffee, tea. Okay, right? Very simple. Now let's go back to that sheet music. And I hope you're going to have a little bit of a eureka moment now. So let's look at the first line, the very first line. Um. All we've got is tea and coffee. Okay, There's one little thing at the end there, which we need to bear in mind. That's a crotchet rest. It's worth one whole beat. When we get a crotchet rest, okay, because this is another common mistake, people don't play the rest. You've got to play the, you've got to play the rest, okay? Um, 
And so we need to acknowledge the rest. We need to do something. We need to, and I find if you physically do something on the rest, that will really help because the rests are just as important. They help space out the notes. So when we get a crotchet rest, we're going to nod our head. We're going to say rest, okay? Rest. I know this is all a bit daft, but stick with it. Trust me, this will work. And if you can, if it helps you read music, it's worth it. Okay, here we go. So let's play the first line. Here we go. So one, two, uh, sorry, three, two, yeah. One, two, three, four. Tea, tea, coffee, tea, tea, coffee, tea, tea. Coffee, coffee, tea, tea, coffee, tea, tea, rest. Well done. You're, you're sight reading. That's it. You're reading music you've never seen before, and you're playing it in real time as you, as you see it. Your brain is batch processing. One little thing I would point out, um, when you're playing snare drum, I would suggest it's a good idea to always alternate your sticks. Okay? Don't play right hand lead or left hand lead if that's your if that's if you're left handed try to alternate at all times when you're doing this because you, you don't want to get stuck always li playing on one side because later on when we get three note groupings it's going to trip you up so you need to be equally comfortable starting uh, 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 one of your beverages on either on either hand okay let's look at number 2 so nothing new there nothing new it's the same stuff jumbled up watch out for your rest here we go number 2 1 2 Three, four. T rest. T rest. T coffee. T rest. Coffee. T coffee. T T rest. Coffee. T. Very good. Excellent. Okay. Now, if we look at number three, there's a new piece of information there. Uh, in fact, there's a couple things. So first of all, if we look into the third bar, we can see that we've got um, uh, four four quavers joined together. Okay, that's that's just the notation. You can write that. You can. There's different ways of notating the same thing. So again, sometimes that's confusing. It's exactly the same as before. It's just coffee, coffee. That's all it is. You can do one line across the top, whoosh, all the way across, or you can do it as two lines. That doesn't make any difference. It's coffee, coffee. Now what we have got on the second bar of number three is we've got a quaver rest at the beginning there. It looks like the little number seven or the Y. Um, that's just the font that makes it look like that. It's a quaver rest. Now that's equal to one quaver. Can you see though next to it we've got we've got another quaver with the tail hanging down. Okay, I'm looking at the second bar of number three. So we've got a quaver rest followed by a quaver note. So it's still two quavers. It's two quavers. So what you've essentially got there is you've got your coffee without your cough. Okay, so so this is what we're going to do. So we're going to play on the fee, but we're not going to play on the cough. But to acknowledge it, there isn't time. There isn't time to nod your head because it's only half as long. So we we're going to cough. <laughs> so you're going to go <coughs> fee. Okay, <coughs> fee. All right, see that. So I'm going to cough for the for the quaver rest. <coughs> fee, and then I'm going to hit the drum on the fee for that for that single quaver okay so so if we play number 3 now um in fact let's play the last bar the last measure of number 3 okay just to show you what i mean by these coughs what you get is this so it goes coffee <coughs> fee tea rest so it makes sense once again coffee <coughs> fee tea rest okay <laughs> all right Again, it it does it doesn't matter what it is. If it works, it works. Okay, you're you're playing the you're spacing out the notes. You're you're giving the notes their correct value by doing these little coughs and things. Okay, let's play number three. The whole thing. One, two, three, four. T T coffee T <coughs> fee T T rest coffee coffee T T Coffee, <laughs> fee, tea, rest. <laughs> Fantastic. Okay, brilliant. 
number four. Now, don't forget the tails can go down or they can go up. It doesn't make any difference to the note values. I've deliberately done a little of each. I've swapped them around so that you don't get used to just seeing it one way because then when it's you get another bit of music, uh, you know, it could throw you if, you're, if it's not what you're used to seeing. So number four, nothing new, no new stuff, no new information. Okay, just the same thing that we've used all those all those things together now. Here we go. Number four. One, two, three, four. Coffee, tea, coffee, tea, coffee, <coughs> fee, tea, rest. Tea, coffee, tea, coffee, 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 tea, tea. Very good. Okay. Can you get the idea now? You see how this is working? So using these words is helping us to space out the notes. Yeah, We know that we're going to bang the drum for every blob. Every blob is a bang on the drum. And what we're using is this system uh, um, to help us space those out correctly. And that is what's giving us the, the correct rhythms. Okay, next we've got a new, a new beverage here. Okay, now So we're going to look at our final sheet, our fourth sheet. And I've got the rest of them on here. So when we get four... Uh, semi quavers together. This is going to be Coca Cola. Okay, Coca Cola, Coca Cola. Okay, so let's just try some Coca Cola, Coca Cola, Coca Cola, Coca Cola, Coca Cola. Okay, now let's try and mix. Let's just practice before we get into the reading. Let's practice mixing that with the other beverages. So if we do Coca Cola tea, it sounds like this: Coca Cola tea, Coca Cola tea. See how that spaces it out? Yeah. Uh, Coca Cola coffee, Coca Cola coffee, Coca Cola coffee. Okay, get the idea. All right, fantastic. Right, let's go back to our sheet, and we're going to use, we're going to play number five. Okay, number five. One, two, three, four. Coca Cola tea, Coca Cola tea, coffee tea, coffee tea, Coca Cola tea. Coffee, tea, Coca-Cola, coffee, tea, rest. Very good. Excellent. Okay. Get it? Good. Uh, number six, nothing new here. No new information. It's the same stuff, just jumbled up in a different order. Okay. Number six, here we go. One, two, three, four. Tea, Coca-Cola, tea, Coca-Cola, coffee, Coca-Cola, tea, Rest. Coffee, coffee, Coca-Cola, coffee, coffee, Coca-Cola, tea, tea. Very good. You're sight reading. You're playing music you've never seen before, and you're playing it in real time, okay? I'm, I'm whizzing through this. Obviously, you can pause. You can go back. You can, re, you know, take it, have, do a bit of practice on each one, okay? Fantastic. So next, number seven, we've got a new beverage now, a new beverage. Let's check that out. So what we've essentially got here is we've got um, two semiquavers and a quaver. OK, now the quaver is equal to this. It fills out the same space as the two semiquavers. So this is like one, two and three from the four semiquaver placements. Yeah. So the third placement is the quaver, which it is long enough. So it's a little longer. So we're what we're going to use here is we're going to use lemonade. Lemonade. See that uh, aid. Aid is a longer uh, uh, syllable. So lemonade, lemonade. Let's just practice that. Now this is now obviously this is three notes here. So this is what I was talking about before. It's going to flip from your rights to your lefts. Play alternate sticking. Always play alternate sticking on this. It's just it, it just avoids you know it, at first it might you might trip up a bit. It's fine, but gradually you'll get used to that. It, you won't get caught out when you're sight reading something on stage. You know. So here we go. Lemonade. 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 Yeah. Now if I mix that with some other drinks, so maybe lemonade coffee. Lemonade coffee. Lemonade coffee. OK, maybe Coca-Cola lemonade, Coca-Cola lemonade, Coca-Cola lemonade. Yeah. And also we've got tea, lemonade, tea, lemonade. See how they fit together. OK, let's go back to the notation and have a go at number seven. Number seven. OK. All right. So <laughs> we've got four, four beverages now. OK, so it's, this is where you might start to 
you know, your brain, have a little brain freeze. It's fine. Take your time. Go back. Make sure you learn them. You've got to become very fluent with these with these things, okay? Here we go. Number seven. One, two, three, four. Lemonade tea. Lemonade tea. Coffee. Lemonade tea. Rest. Lemonade. Coffee. Coca-Cola tea. Lemonade. Lemonade tea. Rest. Excellent. Very good. One more. Okay. Now we've got another one more. We've got our fifth beverage now for number eight. Let's go back to the sh last sheet. And essentially, if we flip that lemonade around, we flip it around, what we get is the quaver at the beginning and the two semi-quavers at the end. So that quaver on the first half uh, fills out the space of the first and second semi-quavers. So it's a long, short, short. Yeah. And, uh, the, and the beverage we're going to use for that is hot chocolate. OK, I know I spelt it wrong. <laughs> I did that on purpose. It's a phonetic spelling. You know, if you ever get those uh, foreign language dictionaries where you, you know, it's in French and it's kind of spelt how you say it. So that's what I'm doing here. So hot chocolate, hot chocolate. Yeah, hot chocolate. So that, that. So let's try some of those together. Hot chocolate, hot chocolate, hot chocolate, hot chocolate. Let's put that with some other drinks. So we could go hot chocolate lemonade. Hot chocolate lemonade. Hot chocolate lemonade. Let's try hot chocolate Coca-Cola. Hot chocolate Coca-Cola. Yeah, get the idea? Uh, coffee, hot chocolate. Coffee, hot chocolate. Okay, let's go on to number eight. I'm whizzing through it again. I know you may want to pause, spend a bit of time on these things and practice them. Number eight, here we go. All right, so we've got hot chocolates. There's no lemonades in here, okay, because it's very easy to mix those two up when you see them. So I've done them separately to start with, just on seven and eight. So number eight is all hot chocolates. Uh, we've got Coca-Colas, we've got coffees, and we've got teas, okay? <laughs> Sounds like a round of drinks in the cafe. Here we go. Number eight, one, two, three, four. Hot chocolate tea. Hot chocolate tea, hot chocolate coffee tea, tea. Hot chocolate, hot chocolate coffee tea, hot chocolate Coca Cola tea. Rest. Okay. Excellent. Very good. That's number eight. That's all five. That's all five beverages. That's your five. Your five um, rhythms. Okay. Nine and ten. Nothing new in there. It's just the whole lot. Everything jumbled up. Okay. Let's give it a go. All right, so anything anything can go now. So you've got, remember, you've got your <coughs> fee and you've got your rest and then you've got your five beverages. Here we go. Let's have a go. Number nine. One, two, three, four. Coca-Cola, Coca-Cola, coffee, tea. Coca-Cola, hot chocolate, tea, rest. Hot chocolate, lemonade, coffee, tea, Lemonade, lemonade, tea, rest. Excellent. And finally, number 10. A little awkward, this one, the last one, number 10. Watch out for these rests. Some funny little phrasing there at the beginning. So here we go. Number 10. Tea, coffee, tea, coffee, tea, Coca-Cola, tea, coffee, tea, Coca-Cola, hot chocolate, tea, Lemonade, coffee, tea, tea. Well done. <laughs> there we go. You've read the whole thing. That's, t you know, that's amazing, right? So in, in, in just a small amount of time. So I hope that was helpful. I would suggest you go back, go over the sheets and, um, yeah, and make sure you know those five teams very, very well. Okay, the whole process works on speed of recognition. Now, obviously, we've done it at quite a slow tempo there because we're learning and we need to think about these things. As you get more familiar and, you know, you start to recognize these these beverages and these rhythmic um, words much quickly, much more quickly, um, then just speed the tempo up. You know, if you find this is too easy, do it faster. <laughs> So just, you know, maybe put on a click, you know, may, and, and for, you know, for, for if you if you really want to incorporate this into your practice routine, maybe you could add some bass drum and some snare um, hi hat feet as well. So it's more like a kind of march thing or something like that. That'll give you a little bit of coordination, another layer for your brain to deal with. I hope that was helpful. I hope you found that. I hope that worked. I hope you I hope you can see now that, um, you know, 
when we learn, what we need is a process and we need a way of thinking about it. And I'm a great advocate of that. I've got a lot of stuff on my website um, and uh, there's a lot of resources on there. So do check it out. Um, check out my website. Check out my um, other social media. And, uh, you know, if you found this useful, then please do click like and subscribe and maybe leave a nice little comment. Let me know what you thought. Did it did it work? Did it not work? Were there, uh, have you done something similar, but maybe you, you use some other words? This is very common, you know, so blackberry, apple pie, things like that um, are quite common. So, uh, yeah, take care and uh, I'll see you on the next one. Thanks very much. Take care. Bye.